we, we had two transports tonight, Price and Ferguson. Um, fight of the night was Ferguson and Gaethje. Uh, performance of the nights were Gaethje and Francis. So that makes Gaethje uh, seven fights, nine bonuses. That's pretty badass. Um, <laughs> gate was zero, <laughs> attendance was zero. That's a first. Dana, I mean, obviously, I know it means a lot probably just to, to get this event done, you know, to get back is an accomplishment in itself. But then to, to end it the way we did with that main event, just absolutely incredible. Can you talk about just how you're feeling at this moment after, after that fight? Yeah, uh, you know, in talking to everybody this week, I mean, everybody knew how I felt about it. Literally, as a promoter, you can't go out and guarantee that people are going to see anything. This is like... I don't know, in my, in my 20 years of doing this, maybe only the second or third time I've ever guaranteed you that the main event would be incredible. And, uh, you know, the fight was, was really good. I, I thought, I don't want to take anything away from Gaethje because he fought an incredible fight. But, I, I, you know, I thought Tony looked, looked uh, off tonight, thought he looked slow. And I, and I would have to imagine that cutting weight twice in a month will affect you, you know? So I don't know if that was it or what, but the guy isn't fucking human. He's got a, a chin like nothing. Nobody takes Gaethje's punches like that. Nobody I've seen since I've been watching, you know, Gaethje fight can take punches like that. But this kid did, man. Tony Ferguson is uh, he's a special human being. Oh, no, with, with there being no crowd, we could actually hear you afterwards. After the stoppage, you told Hardeen, good job, ref, good job, ref. So you, you felt the stoppage was, was, was well timed? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, especially this guy, because I love him. But Chuck Liddell is, like, blowing me up saying that that was a horrible stoppage, and that's crazy. I, I actually think the fight could have been stopped a little sooner, to be honest with you. Tony took a lot of damage tonight. Um, not only did he take a lot of damage, he took damage from a guy who fucking hits like a truck, a guy who punches very hard and um, usually knocks people unconscious when he hits them with those shots. So I think the stoppage was great, and I think it actually could have been stopped sooner. We haven't seen Gaethje yet. I mean, he clearly took a little bit of damage as well, but do you have an idea, I mean, how soon you'd like him to fight Habib or when, when we could put that fight together? Well, you know, Habib tweeted that he's ready to go this summer, so we'll, we'll get back home next week and figure out, um, you know, what's next and, and get this fight together as soon as possible. Fantastic. I want to ask you about Henry Cejudo. Obviously a great performance by him as well. Incredible. Um, Look incredible tonight. The retirement. Take you by surprise. I mean, were you, did you have any inkling that maybe that was coming? Yeah. He's been talking about retirement to us for the past several months. Um, you know, I didn't know he was going to do it tonight, but I knew he's been talking about it. And you know my opinion on that. If you start talking about retirement in this business, it's probably a good idea. Although, I think he's one of the best in the world, right? He, he looked incredible. And say what you want about Dominic Cruz and his layoffs and all this other stuff. Cruz is a badass fighter with a very high fight IQ and very motivated to win, et cetera, et cetera. And, and tonight was a big win for Cejudo. Yeah, no question. Now you've got to figure out what to do with the title uh, I, you know, I know that you, you probably want to mull it over a little bit, but are there any initial leanings on what you would do? You've got Sterling and Jan saying maybe they should Pete, fight Pete, for the title. It's Peter, Jan, and somebody. Yeah. We'll get that figured out, too. We'll make a, a, a title fight next week for the vacant title and probably do that fight as soon as possible. Sounds good. And then last thing I've got to ask you about the Jacare news, of course. Everything came down last night. What, what were your thoughts on that? How did it, how did it play out? Because um, it was... I don't know, it seemed kind of weird to all of us that, you know, we, we find out kind of last minute, it started on Wednesday. So what was the timeline? How, how did this all unfold? Yeah, we found out last night, um, you know, this whole, the whole world is weird right now. Everything's weird. This whole event's weird. You know, it's, it, it, it's different. We, we live in a different world than we did two months ago. And, um, you know, the bottom line is the, the system worked. The system is you want to find people that, you know, what you don't want to do is two days after the fight say, oh, shit. Jacques Array tested positive for, you know, um, so it worked. I mean, the system worked that we put in place. I mean, most of you that are here have worked with us for a long time. You, you know how we are without sounding like a, you know, a jackass. We're really good at what we do. We're very, very good at what we do. And the way that this week went, we'll just get better. We'll get better by Wednesday. 
then we'll be better by Saturday. And then after Saturday, we'll start to catch our stride and really um, get this thing dialed in and get it figured out. And, and the longer this goes, the better the testing technology is going to get and the faster it will get. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to prove by next Saturday that professional sports can come back safely. Was there any discussion at all when, he, when it was first identified on Wednesday to just pull the fight then or to send him home then rather than wait? And obviously he did the face-offs and he yeah. mingled with some people and that sort of thing. So in retrospect, would it have been better on Wednesday to just say, hey, man, he says he's been around some people with it. We, we just got to get him out of here. No, yeah, I mean, we, we had this guy was with the people that he was with the entire time. Um, you know, we, we kept him away from people and, and – uh, and now we know that he has it. He tested positive. We tested him. We know he has it. And now we can help him, too. Whatever this guy's going to need, we know he's positive, and we can help him and his family. I don't know, you know, what he's going to need medically or, what, you know. That's the other thing. When we're testing all of our employees and our fighters, we'll find out who has this thing, and we can help them. Yeah. Last thing for me on that. Uh, you said, you know, you're going to continue to get better, continue to change. Are, are there any direct changes that will be made to the fighters that are coming in this week, any policy procedure changes because of what happened here? Was there anything learned that you can say, okay, here's, here's where we, we tweak it now? I'm sure, yeah, of course. You know, however it was handled this week, this is our first week, like I said, we'll be better Wednesday, we'll be better Saturday, and, and, and so on and so on. It'll, it'll only get better. Dana. And we can share what we learned here doing three events w with other sports leagues who are reaching out to us and asking. Go ahead. Well, I was about to ask that. How many uh, sports leagues have? Yeah, no, the up? sports leagues and, um, you know, states asking us. You know, a lot can be learned by what we're doing here, not just for um, professional sports, but, you know, sending people back to work and lots of other things in life. Has the president reached out to you? Since I talked to the president tonight. He called me, yeah. Just say congratulations. Yeah. Uh, what do you do with Francis now? Uh, another quick finish for him. He's obviously kind of stuck in a weird position, but where does he go from here? He seems to be want to be active, but I don't know who else he could fight at this point. Yeah, um, we got to figure out this Stipe versus Cormier thing, and, uh, and Francis is next. I mean, he looks incredible. Uh, and so a lot of people online were wondering who the people that were uh, fist bumping the fighters on the way out. So who are those people in the crowd uh, greeting the fighters as they walked out? Oh, I have out? no idea. <laughs> Greg Hardy walked out and someone just kind of gave him a fist bump. <laughs> he looks confused. Yeah, I have no idea. Had to be people that were working the event. Uh, with, I know that Jack Ray tested positive for stuff, but if you look at the situation the world's in right now and the event tonight and the fights tonight, is this as close to a home run? as you could have got this evening. Yeah, yeah, tonight was absolutely positively. And the Jacare thing's a home run, too. You, you, you don't want um, people to test positive. We want everybody to be negative. But th this week, we're going to do like, oh, like 1,100 plus tests. Somebody's going to be positive. It's just it's, it's impossible not to be. What's the situation with uh, Jacare and Uriah Hall's pay? Are they both going to get paid? Yeah, we'll get them figured out. Cool. Um, earlier tonight on Twitter, I know you've done a couple of interviews about this already, but Steven Espinoza uh, alleged that you guys have a clause in the contract that means you can take away the fighters' money if they say disparaging things about the company. Uh, I just wanted you to hear your reaction to that. Say that again to me. Steven Espinoza tweeted that you guys have a clause in your contract that could take the fighters' purse away if they say something negative about the company. I just wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. That's not true. First of all, th there's, there's something in the contract for disparagement. Right. There's a disparagement clause in there that's in all of our contracts. Isn't that creepy looking little fucker a, a lawyer? Isn't that creepy little fucking goofball a lawyer? Does he not know what disparagement means? If you disparage the company... I'm not even a fucking lawyer, and I know the answer to that question. Yeah, it's disparagement. It'd be like if you came out and said, they never tested me. The UFC never tested me for the coronavirus. 
But if you came out and had something critical to say about the testing that was true, that wouldn't be disparagement. Cool. Uh, tonight it was announced that Amanda Noonan... Fucking law school did he go to? <laughs> uh, I can't stand that fucking creep. Anyway, if you couldn't tell, go ahead. Is that based from the Mayweather-McGregor stuff? Is the what? Is, do you d dislike him because of Mayweather-McGregor and the interactions you He's had? He's just a fucking... Look at him. The creepy little dude. Uh, Amanda Nunes versus Felicia Spence. What the fuck does he know about our contracts? <laughs> oh, you just hit me out of left field with this thing. Oh, what does that guy know about our contracts? And if you do, you're spo I thought that guy was a lawyer. Wasn't he De La Hoya's lawyer? I don't know either. Whatever. But anyway, yeah. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. That's the truth. Thank you. Um, yeah. Amanda Nunes versus Felicia Spencer announced for UFC 250. Is that the confirmed main event, or are you looking to add potentially another title fight? Oh, I don't even know. Right now, off the top of my head, I'm, no. I got so much other shit going on in my head right now, I don't, I don't know. Um, Joe Rogan was interviewing the fighters tonight in the cage next to them, and he said on commentary multiple times that he wishes he, crew, uh, he Anik, and Cormier could just sit together properly. Um, why do, are they, those guys spread out and then have them do like spots together and stuff like that? Yeah, as, you know... Uh, obviously, there's this, you know, the whole social distancing and keeping people away from each other and everything. Um, everybody here was tested, you know. The people that are still here we know are negative. Um, I, I don't know, you know. We're just trying to, we're, like, like I was saying with Morgan earlier, we're, we're, we're still figuring this whole thing out, you know. This was the first one. It was a success. Wednesday will be better. Saturday will be better than that, and so on and so forth. Uh, and last thing from me, um, earlier today uh, on, I think it's your Instagram, uh, Nate Diaz told Conor McGregor to shut his mouth, and then Conor replied, why don't you sign the contract? Right. Is there something there that we should know about? No. Um, I mean, they don't like each other, but uh, no, there's, there's nothing going on. I mean... Connor wants to fight. I don't even know if Nate wants to fight. You know, I think they're just talking shit to each other. Uh, sorry, two more things. What, what is next for Dominic Cruz at this point? He lost the title shot. He was out for four years beforehand. He looked good in there, but he did lose. Yeah. What do you think is next for him? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, I guess that's up to him. You know, I know he was unhappy with the stoppage and, um, you know, was telling me that, he thought the stoppage was bullshit and stuff like that. So I, I don't know how he feels about it. And is, uh, is this the end of Tony Ferguson versus Khabib Namagamadov? Well, for now it is, yeah. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Uh, Dana, uh, President Trump had a message of, you know, this being the first live sport to be back. How did that come, uh, come about? He, uh, you know... He, he wants sports back. He wants to do it in these phases. He thinks that sports needs to come back first, then, then figure out how to get people back to work, and then figure out how to get kids back in school. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we came out and we were first, and he congratulated us on being first. Were you surprised? Um, yeah. yeah I, well, I thought it was, you know, it was very nice of him, cool, but very typical of him. This guy's been awesome to me for 20 years. How much confidence does this give you now that UFC 249, you know, is in the bag and uh, moving forward with the rest of the events this year? I was confident, you know, three weeks ago. I was confident two weeks before that. I just, I, I, knew, I knew we could do this. Um, I knew we could do it. I knew we'd figure it out. And uh, e even with all the hurdles that we had, early on, this has been fun. It's been challenging and it's been fun. Um, I know that sounds a little demented to tell you that I've had fun going through this, but um, it's, it's, it's been challenging and I've, 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 I've enjoyed the, the whole, uh, you know, game of it, if you will. So, so during the pandemic, you didn't get as much rest as the rest <laughs> of us did. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, my, my poor team. Where's Hunter? 
was haunted. This guy was within an inch of death. The, I, the coronavirus was going to kill him before it even fucking got to him. Um, my team has worked hard, and, you know, we, we uh, yeah, yeah. It's, One last thing for me. You were there, cage side, no crowd in the stands. What was that experience like? Weird. It was weird. You guys must have thought this too, but during the Tony Ferguson Gaethje fight, the crowd would have been going insane during that fight. I mean, there were just so many moments in that fight where I was like, if there was a crowd here right now, this place would be going nuts. And uh, there's so many things that you love about live sports, whether you're home, in a bar, or there live, you know, and uh, one of the big key components to live sports are the, the group of people that you're with and, you know, the energy that you get uh, when cool things happen. And tonight was an amazing event, but that was definitely missing tonight, you know, the, these, these moments where, I mean, just the, the, the walk-ins alone, how fun are the walk-ins? When you get that main event and the lights drop, and the feature starts playing, and then the walkout music comes, and they come out of that tunnel to buffer to the first punch being thrown. I mean, it's just it's all part of what makes this so great. Have, have you heard back from uh, ESPN any feedback on how well the show or how happy they were with it? It did very well, and they're very happy. Yeah. They should have listened to me three weeks ago. Hey, Dana. Yeah. Hey. Right, right here. Hi. With this being the only show in town, uh, was the placement of ads, price placement leverage, was that any different to advertise? Were you able to have more leverage for advertisers with this being the only sport on Saturday evening? I, I don't know about that. I think that, um, you, you know, that's ESPN's deal. Um, you know, I'm sure whoever was advertising was happy there was a live event, you know. Um, I, I don't know how that works. Calvin Cater, impressive victory against Jeremy Stevens, five and a half pounds overweight. Is it safe to say he's got a top five opponent next? What, what would you say is next for him? Maybe a rematch with Zabit? I was super excited about that fight um, all week, and, and, and that fight delivered exactly like I thought it would. I mean, Calvin Cater, you know, proved tonight who he is and that he's here to stay and that he's the real guy. And Jeremy Stevens, I love that kid and have since the day he walked into this, you know, this organization. That guy fucking brushes his teeth with bad intentions. He, he is a fucking savage, man. I love watching that kid fight. So, um, yeah, the answer to your question, yes. And lastly, is the fight still to make for the featherweight championship? Volkanovski against Holloway, too? Yes. Did you have an update on May 23rd in Vegas, or could it be maybe the next week? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm just focusing on this week, man, and get through this week, and then we get back home. You know, we'll see where the world is next week and where Nevada is, and, and uh, I, I'm... Yes, I'm, I want to go the 23rd at the Apex Center in Las Vegas, and hopefully, um, you know, the governor lets that happen. Do you, do you know when you would have to know that you can do it before you'd have to move it? Or, like, is there a time, like, 10 days out or seven days out, anything like that? I'd like to know when we get home that we, that we can do it, you know? When you think about trying to keep this thing safe for everybody, there's no place safer to do it than at home in, in the Apex Center. We can make sure that everything is perfect there. And that place was built for fights. That's what we built it for. Uh, we invested a, a, a ton of money into that place, and, and, and uh, you know, hopefully we get to do it. Do you, you said some organizations reached out. Do, do you know, did the Nevada Commission reach out about what you guys are doing here and maybe give a, approval or anything like that? We've been working with the Nevada Commission since this whole thing started. We, we work really closely with them and, and have a great relationship with, with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. So um, we've been working with them since day one. How quickly would you like to know what to do with a 35-pound belt, or do you want to wait until Henry kind of settles down and finalizes? To do with what? With the, th with the Henry's belt, or do you wait to, if he's really serious about no, it? No, I mean, listen, what you do is 
we have two more fights here this week. We got Wednesday and Saturday. So, so my team is going to be buried, you know, working this week. You let that guy take a week, go home, or whatever he's going to do and think about it. And then when we get home and get back to work on Monday, um, we call Henry and say, is this really what you want to do? And if the answer is yes, then matchmaking meetings Tuesday. We'll have, we'll have another fight on Tuesday. I know with, with the Jacare situation, you were pleased with how it worked out, everything, you know, you got him out of here and everything else. Was the commission fully on board in Florida, or was there any concern of, like, hey, maybe we should? Let me tell you what. The Florida Athletic Commission has been incredible through this thing. The governor here has been incredible, and the mayor has been. These guys have been real. This is why we came here first. This is why we, you know, I, I told you the other day when we were talking, you know, we, we got – probably 10 places we could go in the United States right now. This is why we came here first. We came here first because these guys have been incredible. And when you have people that are willing to work with you the way that the commission, the mayor, and the governor have here, it's a no-brainer. It's just this is, this is where you got to go. And then uh, the last thing I'll And I would suggest anybody else who's out there right now, anywhere in the country or in the world, and you're looking to do your first event back, come to Florida. I'm telling you, come to Florida. And then the, the last thing on the, on the Jacare situation, you know, you guys' protocols were in place, but part of it was for the guys to stay away from each other. And obviously he didn't fully follow that. Is there anything that you guys Who's add? Who's that? Jacare was around other fighters on film. And everything eh, yeah. Is, yeah. Is there anything? Is there anything what I'm about? hearing about that situation, I know that there was some video. Yeah. That that happened. It wasn't for a long period of time. He went over and did something real quick. The optics obviously look really bad right. on that one, but... Yes, th this, was, this was our first one. There were a couple, you saw, I mean, even the stare down. He stayed away from me, he stayed away from, you know, Uriah. He, he had gloves and a mask on and, and all that stuff. You know, nothing goes 100% perfect. We, we, we did the best job we could going into this thing. Th that's what I'm getting at. You guys did everything you, can, you did, but you can't be around them 24 hours a day. Is there anything you say to fighters in the next couple of cards to say like Well, I was saying that leading up to this thing. This is a team effort. You know, we can do everything perfect, but the fighters have to do their part too. Not just, um, not just in the public when we're doing things in public, but, uh, you know, when they go back to their rooms, if they, they, you know, they go out at night or anything, they, they, everybody has to be careful and try to do their part. And then is there, do you have a place in Vegas or have you talked about it yet of where you could do a similar thing that you did here of having a hotel and kind of isolating from everyone? We have a hotel. Yeah, we, we, we've got all that in place. I, I truly believe that um, it, it, it will be so safe in Vegas if we can do it at the Apex. We can make it so safe. That's it? And, and, and thank all you guys for coming too, man. I, I know... I know uh, you know, this thing scares a lot of people. And, uh, you know, thanks for coming and, and supporting it. We appreciate it. Be safe. Have a, have a safe trip home.